This video is part of the Commercial Building Electrical Design Series. We're talking about lighting design, and today we want to look at uh, incandescent sources. So just uh, taking a quick uh, note of where we are. We're in the uh, lighting design portion of this series, and again, just starting to uh, look at different types of sources. So now that we have an understanding of the important issues involved in lighting, we can now use this understanding to examine and compare the different available lighting sources. There really is no ultimate all-purpose source that is perfect for all situations, except for maybe the sun. So we will compare these sources, examine their attributes, and review their shortcomings such that we can compare their uses for different situations and hopefully make some determinations as to what sources are best for certain applications. Through these, this examinations, uh, we will examine incandescent, fluorescent, HID, inductance, and LED type sources. So let's talk about incandescent. Incandescent lighting is by far the easiest form of lighting to understand and control. And the basic explanation of this form of lighting is that basically you run electricity through some material called a filament until it heats up enough and glows. Now this is somewhat of a simplistic view, but not too far from the truth. So this is the original form of commercial grade electrical lighting developed. While many people believe that Thomas Edison invented this form of lighting, this simply is not the case. What Edison did was to improve the invention and develop it to a practical and usable state. It is by far the most expensive and least efficient form of lighting available. This being the case, it still has its uses and advantages uh, that we'll discuss in just a minute. So this is a, a basic picture of what this looks like. So you have a filament, many times it's tungsten filament. Uh, you have a glass enclosure, um, and it's usually filled with some type of inert gas that's under low pressure. An important aspect about these lamps is that the intensity of the light of the bulb or the fixture is directly proportionate to the amount of voltage applied to it. In other words, by simply varying the voltage to the fixture uh, by some res resistive rheostat or other voltage varying device, the light can be dimmed to any desired intensity level. This makes this fixture ideal for applications where it is desired that the light level should be varied depending upon the circumstances. Incandescent lighting is still a very widely used lighting source, but it does have some major issues that the designer should be aware of and take into account when specifying this type of lighting. Some of the major issues and their impact are discussed here. <clears throat> One of the major disadvantages of incandescent lighting as compared to other types of light sources is the economic impact of operation. The initial installation cost of incandescent lighting is usually less than other types of light sources. However, the cost to operate the fixture in terms of lumen per watt is typically much greater. This results in having to supply much higher wattage fixtures as compared to other light sources to obtain the same foot candle performance, which in turn results in more electricity required, which translates into a higher electric bill to the end user. Typical efficacy values for this type of luminaire is 10 to 40 lumens per watt. Uh, we looked at a table of this in the previous video, and, and as we saw, this was pretty low compared to other light fixtures or bulb types. Uh, lamp life. Also, another fact to consider is that the incandescent bulbs typically do not last as long as other types of light sources, usually less than half the bulb life as other light sources. This results in added expense to purchase more bulbs and replace them more often. These two factors should be weighed when considering using this type of lighting as compared to a more economical source of lighting versus the applications and effects that it's being used for. Typical lamp life of this type of luminaire is generally considered to be in the one to 2,000 hour range. So this is one to two hours of burn time. Um, if we look at light loss factors, since there is no ballast for these types of fixtures, the ballast factor is by definition one, that is no losses. This among other things causes these types of sources to have a fairly high light loss factor, uh, which is desirable. It also means that the light level for these types of fixtures typically stays relatively constant for the time, from the time of installation to the death of the lamp. 
typical light loss factor for this type of luminaire is in the high 90s. Uh, we'll say 97% maybe on average. So as discussed previously, the, spe the spectral power distribution for incandescent fixtures is highly unique in that it contains almost no blue components. On the surface, this seems like it would be a detrimental characteristic for this type of lighting. This is true for many situations, but not, not, but not all of them. This light source provides a very warm appearance, which is very desirable in some applications, but very poor for other applications. The designer should have a good understanding of what this means in terms of lighting appearance and performance and how that relates to specific situations. So again, here's a look at that graph. So again, very low representation in the blue range. Uh, from green on up though, you're probably okay. You can see actually there's three different curves here. Uh, one for a 2800 uh, Kelvin bulb, 3000 Kelvin, and 3200 Kelvin. And this should make sense, right? So 2800 is going to be, you know, more in the red range. And so you can see it cuts out these lower colors and it's much higher in the red area. It's this curve here. Uh, whereas the 3200 is moving towards the bluish white stage so we can see it this curve is up so it will allow some, some more blue representation there and cuts down on the red there are many factors involved in determining a coefficient of utilization for a given situation where some are dependent on the luminaire and others are not the elements depend dependent on the luminaire involved in these calculations for these types of sources are generally considered to be good so usually uh, you know depending on other factors when you're using these fixtures you usually have a pretty decent coefficient of utilization um, we talk about control other issues of interest related to different sources that are that of control that is warm-up restart dimming uh, as far as warm-up and hot restart incandescent are excellent in that they instant that they are instant in both cases you can turn them off and on instantly uh, also as far as dimming incandescents are probably the best choice for dimming as they are direct dimmable and usually do not require any special equipment nor do they have any ill effects from dimming such as possible hum which you can get from other type of fixtures uh, just some observations. Incandescent lighting is not generally considered a good option for most commercial applications. It is not a very economical choice due to its inefficiencies. Uh, however, there are some specific applications that incandescent are a good choice for, such as dimming applica applications and when a warmer environment is desired. Uh, you know, just be aware that there are many different types and sizes of these fixtures. Uh, and so here's a, a pretty good all-encompassing graph and you can see that um, we have different series which just describes the bulb shape so you have your a series which is pretty common um, you know your b c series you'll see these in candelabras or chandeliers um, rp series g series the br series so i mean you've probably seen most of these bulbs maybe not all of them another common one is your par your par 56 par 46 these are used outdoors uh, you know to of houses sometimes to, to just do general lighting in the yard um, but um, this is pretty much uh, the bulk of that you'll that you'll see now you will see that the first part of their number or their part number is the type of bulb the second number we'll look at on the next slide and what defines that So as discussed, the second number uh, has to do with the diameter of the bulb in eighths of an inch. So for instance, this is a A19 bulb. This is what you used to see in all lamps and houses. Uh, you know, it's pretty, probably the most common bulb used in, in residential. And it was an A19 bulb. So A is the shape of the bulb itself. And then 19 means that it's 19 eighths of an inch. So, uh, you know, they, they tell you that here. So 19 eighths of an inch, that's where the 19 comes from. So you can have an A21 bulb, which is much larger. Uh, when you get to the fluorescence, we'll see those, the T8s, T5s. Anytime you see a number with a light bulb part number, it's usually describing the, the largest diameter in eighths of an inch. And here's some of the more common bulbs you might see, like a BR38 would come out to here, uh, PS30 to here. So uh, that's just a way to decipher what the but the part number is on a light bulb, or at least an incandescent bulb. 